Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Bread Precision. In this video, we are continuing to look at Teltonica and the remote management system, RMS, which allows you to remotely manage all of your Teltonica routers that are deployed out in the field and all your buildings that you want to have remote access to. And we're going to specifically look at a feature called remote access. Um, what this feature allows you to do is access services that are running on your devices LAN ports. So if you had, say, a JACE, like we'll be showing in the demonstration here in a moment, if we have a JACE plugged into a RUT router out at a site, so we're plugged into the LAN side, and we want to access the web server and the web interface from outside, anywhere else in the world, um, we want to get access to that. We would prefer not to have to install a VPN client or, or go full VPN with it. RMS allows you to do that using the remote access feature. It only works for specific kinds of services, and I'll show you that here in a moment. So let's get started. All right, so as with anything RMS related, our first step is to get logged in. So I will do that now using a password manager just to make that all a little bit easier and run through the two-factor very quickly there. So what we're going to be using is this RMS Connect feature here on the left. And before we jump in there, I just wanted to explain exactly how this setup is done. I've got this RUT956 that's actually at our office. I'm recording this from my home office. And behind that RUT956 is a JS8000. And I'd like to be able to access the web interface of that JS8000. And preferably, I would like to be able to access it without having to install a VPN application or have to worry about anything like that in order to get that access. RMS Connect and the remote access feature allow us to do that. So we will open up RMS Connect here and go to remote access. And there haven't been any remote access setups done yet. So we'll click on actions and then add remote access. And then we will, you have the option to choose two different ways that you want to set this up. So you can do an auto scan. And what that's going to do is allow you to select the router that your device that you want to be able to access is uh, underneath. And it will automatically scan for the, the devices that are on the LAN side of that router and show them up on a list. And you'll see that in a moment because that's how we're going to set this up. But you also have the ability to do this manually. And you can select the router that it's underneath and then just manually punch in your IP address and your port. And importantly, the protocol. As I mentioned before, this only works for specific protocols. And as you can see here in our world, really the only two three, I guess, that you're ever going to come across and need to use in this case is HTTP, HTTPS, and RDP, which is remote desktop. That's the built-in Windows remote desktop application. So you can make use of all three of those things and access your devices that are running those particular servers through remote access. So let me jump back into auto scan. I will choose my 956 and then I'll do scan device. Give it a couple seconds here and it will spit out a whole bunch of IP addresses and devices that are running those particular services. Uh, I know in my case that it's this 10.10.10.100 that is my JACE and that's what I want to have access to. So I'm going to call this JACE web interface and then I'm going to hit add. It'll do its thing to set up the correct rules and make sure that the access is set up properly at the router. So we'll hit close once that's complete. And then we will take a look at what's going on here in the interface. So it'll show us uh, when we connected it or when we created it, we can add tags to make our organization a little bit nicer, add a description if we needed to do that to give us a little bit more detail of what exactly this is. And then in the top right, we have a couple icons that give us additional details. We can delete it. We can edit the remote access details if we needed to. If, like, say, a port changed or something like that, you could do that there. And then if you hit this play button, you'll connect. And before we do that, I wanted to jump in all the way into the connection itself. So we can get a little bit of a status indication here. You know, RMS is able to see into the, the RUT956 and then see into that IP address, in my case, JACE, and get access to that. 
when you click that play button on the previous screen, what actually happens is you're, cl you're clicking connect essentially here. What that's going to do is generate you a very long URL that has basically a random string inside it that's going to, through the maxi magic of proxies, get you into the web interface, in my case, of my JSON. So if I click connect, it will make all the stuff happen that needs to in order for that proxy connection to happen between RMS and my RUT956. And you'll also notice, uh, I sort of glanced over it, there's a duration until. This URL will only be active by default for 45 minutes. So we get additional security on top of this crazy long string of randomly generated text that obfuscates us from the internet and uh, makes it super difficult and nearly impossible for someone to randomly find this URL. Um, that duration also adds additional security. So when I click that, everything happened that needed to, and now I've got my web, inter web interface for my JSE. You can leave it in this little pop-up window if you wanted to. You can hit the expand to make it like a full-size window, or my preference would be to close it, and then you'll see the URL is here, and it's still active. It tells me it's still active. I can click the copy link to clipboard. I can make a new tab, and then connect this way. And I get my full access. It's as if I was connected to the JSE via a port forward or even just locally at the JSE level. The other thing that's worth noting here is that you can delete this so that it will kill the link and the link will no longer work properly. If I go back over here and I do like a refresh, you'll see it's basically saying it's dead and there's nothing here to see. So if you needed to do that, you can. And then you can also manually change this so that say it's you know open for a week and hit apply and then I'll hit generate. Now it won't automatically jump me into that little pop-up where it had the web browser brought up for this particular IP address. Instead, it will just generate the URL and I can copy that URL and save it and share it to anyone else that may or may not need access because all you need to get access in this case is this specific URL. That's it. Obviously, when we're connecting to a JSE, we still have our JSE security that you'll have to go through in order to get into the station, but to bring up that login page, all you'll need is this URL. So help, hopefully that was helpful and informative for you. I think remote access has a lot of potential and making your life easier, especially when you go to 4.15 and you're using something like WebSockets. You could use those URLs within Workbench and connect through Fox like it was just an IP address to a JSE or your supervisor. So hopefully that was helpful and informative. Thanks as always for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. If there's any specific RMS features that you'd like to see covered in more depth, you can leave those in the comments down below. And if you're interested in purchasing any Teltonica product, you can find us at brodyprecision.com and store.brodyprecision.com and we're more than happy to help you out. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.